So when I bought my ZX Spectrum, it came with some tapes with software on it that I'd like to check out. Unfortunately, I don't really have a good um, tape player to use. So I bought one. I'm not entirely sure if it works, but let's check it out. All right, let's uh, check what's under here, and there we are. This is a, I believe, late 70s Hitachi cassette player. Buttons seem to work at least. Tape counter opens up. It does have um, AC mains power available, but I think it's also got battery support. If we look on the side, uh, we've got a number of connectors. So we've got AC power, uh, DC 6 volt in, that's interesting, that's cool. Um, we've got a recording input with a DIN plug, um, and then we've got what I'm mostly after, microphone, uh, remote, uh, radio, I assume that's out, um, external. Uh, let's see if we can get this out of the case and have a closer look. Looks in okay condition. Let's check the battery port. Good. There are no batteries inside to leak. And inside, get some light in there. Inside, looks okay. Maybe a little bit of rust on uh, these contacts, but a little bit of corrosion, signs of corrosion in there maybe, but nothing too bad. You can see a sticker in there. Uh, battery, C cell batteries, four of them. Okay, let's get this thing hooked up and see if it even works. Okay, so I've got the AC cable plugged in. Um, I'm just going to try plugging this into power. Let's plug the power in and see if it explodes. Nothing. All right, I'm just going to try some of the controls and see if they do anything. Seems to be playing. I can hear some static. Fast forward. Rewind. All right, uh, I'm gonna eject the tape. And let's try an actual cassette. Now, I had a look around my house and I couldn't find any cassette tapes other than data tapes. And I wanted an audio tape to test this with. So, Last weekend, while I was down at the second-hand recycling place near the garbage dump, or the tip, I found an audiobook, Michael Palin's Hemingway Adventure. I figured this should be able to at least get some audio playing. So, let's give it a try, and it was about a dollar. So, let's go side one, pop that in. Rewind, it's already rewound. Let's play and see if we get any sound out of this. Fast forward through the music in case I get a copyright strike. Ha ha ha. And feel the heat of Spanish squares and stare up into the wide skies of Castile and sense the cold at night in a pine forest. Hemingway's world was close. We have tone and, and, itchy and, and volume and knobs. Exhausting. It was like a real thing. To experience it, All right. 
Nice. It works. Here I am with the composite modded Specky. I have the new cassette player. And I have a stack of Spectrum cassettes that I got um, when I bought this Spectrum. So we'll have a quick look through the tapes. Uh, first of all, I have the Horizon Software Starter Pack. Uh, I'm pretty sure this came with the Spectrum, if you bought one back in the day. You can see here, um, an introductory video cassette for the ZX Spectrum. It includes a comprehensive keyboard trainer and an entertaining and illuminating range of programs. Now, I've heard that uh, entertaining and illuminating range of programs on here are terrible, but we'll give this a try and see if the tape loads. Double-sided tape, A and B, and there are some further instructions on here on how to load it, so we'll have a look at that when we get to trying the tape out. Uh, next, I have here a uh, recorded tape. Uh, so we have here Sinclair Spectrum, Language Basic, 24th of the 4th, 1984. Um, and there is, it's a bit hard to read, but it does say Scribble Graphics. Um, see if there's anything on the inside of the label. Nope. So I'm not sure if this is just some program someone has written. Uh, we have here again another um, tape. Nothing listed. This might actually be empty. I don't know. Yep, this might actually be just a blank tape. That's pretty cool. Uh, this one here, so again on the index, we see side one, turn over to other side of tape and run cartridge to see what is on tape. Side two, cataluge, cataluge. Okay, interesting. Uh, this one here, here we go, this has got a printed label. Looks like a number of games. So chess, Backgammon, Reversi, Meteor Storm, Galaxians, the Galaxian clone. Space Raiders, probably a Space Invaders clone. Uh, Escape. Gulp Man, Maze Man, and then on side B, we've got Jetpack, Cookie, Psst, Hungry Horus, Horus Goes Skiing, Horus and the Spiders. Now, I'm pretty sure Horus was sort of a reasonably popular, I don't know if it really was, but I've heard of it a number of times, um, uh, Spectrum series, uh, sort of little platformers, I think. Cool, Mixed 16K Progs. Now this is a 16K ZX Spectrum, only has 16K of memory. I would like to upgrade it to the full 48K though. Uh, this one here just says Rubik's Cube on a label here, but there's something underneath it as well, so I don't know if this was written over. Here we go, Side B, Jetpack, Cookie, Psst, Hungry Horus, Horus Goes Skiing, Horus and the Spiders. Uh, oh, and there we go. More labels there. So it looks like the same same list of programs as this. So maybe they um, they uh, copied it onto another tape as well. Because of course, if you had a a cassette player with you know two cassette ports, two cassette slots, you can pretty easily record from one to the other. So a very easy way to back up your games. First of all, I'm going to check the Horizon software starter pack to see if I can get this one to load. Hopefully it works. Sometimes these cassettes can be a bit flaky. Um, for those that haven't really used cassettes for data storage before, uh, a few things to point out. On the side of this cassette player, uh, there are a few ports. There's a microphone port for recording, uh, radio. I'm not entirely sure what that is for. I don't know if it's a different input. Um, and then we've also got this four ohms and external, sp which I assume is external speaker. So I'm going to be using that in the hope that this will output the audio over the external speaker. So I've just got a 3.5 millimeter cable. This is a mono cable. Um, you can tell the difference between mono cables and um, uh, stereo cables. There'll be a second little black ring um, separating the two, the, the, the left and the right um, connectors. But this is just mono, so which is what we want. So I'll plug that in. I do have the power plugged in as well. There is a little counter there. There's little numbers. And if I press play, that's going to start going up. You'll see it's counting up. But I can reset it by pressing this button. And this just gives you a counter of how far into the tape you are. Um, so you'd rewind the tape, set this to zero, 
and then when you start playing this will count up so you can rewind the tape reset this to zero and then you know that you're at um, the start of the tape and then if you write down on your cassette at what number on this counter your programs are at you can fast forward to the correct position and load them without needing to wait for the entire tape to play for reference back on this tape here you'll see these numbers down the side next to each program um, that will be the the counter on which uh, which you'd want to fast forward the tape to to get to that program the other side of the audio cable i will plug into the back of the spectrum um, so we'll plug it into the ear port so looking inside the horizons um, case there are some instructions so i'll just quickly scroll past these instructions feel free to pause this if you want to read this Now, to load software, what we need to do is use the load command. Load and run by typing load and site A. Now, the instructions also mention setting the volume to usually around 75%. So I'm just going to adjust that. Um, this volume goes only goes to 10, doesn't go all the way to 11. So I'll set it to about halfway between 7 and 8. All right, I'm going to pop open the tape player. I'm going to pop this in on site A. And we will be kind and rewind because the previous person didn't. So it seems to be struggling. It's having a bit of difficulty. Playing seems to work. I wonder if the belt is having some issues. Try rewinding this a bit manually. There we go. So we're back at the start. Okay, what side A back in? Just gonna hit play. The rewind is really struggling. Back to the spectrum. We'll try what it says. Load side A. So we want uh, side A. I press enter, and now it's waiting for us to play the tape. So let's see what happens when I hit play. Okay, so the colors on the screen flashing around on the border indicate that it's receiving some data transfer. But we'll see if anything comes up. That's good. That's a good sign. There we go, it's found the program. And now it's actually loading the program. Cool, volume set correctly. So now we just need to wait for the program to load. So basically the, there'll be a very small program at the start of the tape that loads. And that's what's running and showing that volume set correctly while the rest of the program is loading. Um, it can take some time for all the data to load. I can't remember exactly what the data um, the data rate is for these cassettes. I'll, um, I'll look that up and I'll put that on screen now. Bytes rainbow. There we go. Oops, something's happening. Is it drawing a rainbow? Is that what it's doing? I think that's what it's doing. Blowing people's minds in 1982. Look at that speed. Wow. That's pretty cool. Now let's try another logo. Z80 processor working its magic. So the way that the color works on the ZX Spectrum is sort of interesting. Um, you can set one color per, I think it's eight by eight pixel block. Oh, that actually looks pretty good. So 
So it's loading through multiple programs that it's finding on the computer. Oh, sorry, I'm, it's, it's working through multiple programs it finds on the tape. Yeah. So we've had rainbow, we've had logo, now we're on to hardware. All right, cool. So it's an introduction to the actual ZX Spectrum's hardware. This must be the introduction program. So on side A, the first program is introduction. It's talking about the edge connector, memory, ROM, RAM, the Z80 CPU. Oh, here comes the color. Looks good. Stop the tape. Okay, so stop the tape. Now that's because otherwise it's gonna keep going through the rest of the programs, but this is gonna want us to play the tape again a little bit later to move on to the next program. Cool, so we've got the Z80, so the ZX Spectrum here with its Z80 processor, um, the ULA chip, which is the graphics um, chip, the ROM, the RAM, the edge connector, which is where you can plug peripherals in, we've got a keyboard, television, tape, LS, oh, there'll be the speaker inside it, I guess, to press any key. As you might expect, the rest of this program is pretty dry, just providing a sort of an introduction to how the computer works at a very, very basic level, uh, along with some keyboard training programs. If anyone's interested to see more of this, um, I'm sure you can find some, some uh, I guess, some more in-depth videos on this program elsewhere on YouTube. Otherwise, uh, I can also upload this as a separate video at some point. If anyone is interested, let me know. Uh, I'm going to skip ahead at this point, and we'll get to the point where I can actually load a game. I'm guessing this is going to be Space Invaders. It's got to be, right? Ooh, oh, there we go. Now I've got to figure out what the controls are. Oh, there's arrows on this, isn't there? Oh, let's shoot. Oh, there we go. Okay, so one and two move me left and right, and s four shoots. And yeah, it's Space Invaders. Him just in time. Cool. Well, that's Space Raiders. I'm gonna have a bit of a look through these tapes, and um, I'll, I'll probably get a bit of an idea of what games are on these tapes, and I might do another video going through them in some more detail. But yeah, that's um, successfully getting some games running on the Spectrum finally. So I'm happy about that. I do want to see if some of these blank tapes are indeed blank, because then I might be able to use them to save data onto them. If not, I can just buy some more tapes. But yeah, um, thanks guys. I um, hope you enjoyed finally seeing something running on the spectrum. See you next time.